So I gotta come up on here and ask y'all, which one of y'all got cocaine into the White House over the weekend? Fendi, like the bag. <laughs> This is the I Refuse Podcast. It's Mr. Fox, the I Refuse Podcast. I'm back with a new video. Going to try to keep this brief. Two things. So, Essence Festival was over the weekend. We'll get into that. Also, you know, 4th of July happened yesterday. But in the midst of all this uh, patriotism, somebody got cocaine into the White House, the West Wing specifically, to the point where Secret Service had to come in, agents, people to, t <laughs> people to test out, <laughs> test whether it was hazardous or non-hazardous. I just need to know. Like, you know, usually the White House is off limits. To the public, is it an inside job? What's really going on down there? You know, we just want to come down to the wharf and watch, the, you know, set up and watch the fireworks and come down to the little 4th of July thing and just mind our business. Meanwhile, while I got you on the line, by the way, the 4th of July event that PBS had on yesterday, last night, hosted by Alfonso Ribeiro, Pretty cute. It was the funny thing about it was watching how the white people didn't know how to react to boys to men. Like they didn't know who they were. They couldn't get with the rhythm. You know, boys to men has always been on the two and the four, and white people have always been on the one and the three. Uh, some people just standing there, just looking like. They see there's a dot on the wall and they just want to focus on that while the black people were giving it up. And if there's one thing I know about Boys to Men, Wanye specifically, is that one thing Wanye is always going to do is run. Do all the run with the finger waves and all that. And I'm just like, I'm pretty sure at the most Motown Philly back again probably requires that a little bit because it, it's jumping or whatever. But nothing else in y'all's repertoire requires all this. And Boys to Men is just, it just throws me off when it's only three of them instead of four. Um, You know, the rest of the show was cute. Um, clearly all the white people were waiting for Chicago to show up. Show up. You know they were uh, they were low energy when Belinda Carlisle showed up and did a couple of her songs and did a couple of Go Go's songs with Alpha Go Go's. Uh, Elmo Cookie Monster did what they had to do. The fireworks were pretty cool, and then he went on about our business. So I woke up today. Clearly. First thing I saw was Jill Scott's version of the National Anthem, which was amazing. Essence Festival was over the weekend. It was a huge turnout. A lot of um, a long hip-hop history performance featuring well-known female MCs as well as lesser-known female MCs. Hate that I missed Mia X. Don't She doesn't get discussed enough. Uh, Jill Scott's National Anthem, amazing. Um, there really isn't a whole lot of conversation around that, it seems as though what NDRE had to say overshadowed that. Like, a lot of people were coming down on her. So, NDRE decided over the weekend, or probably Monday the latest, to respond to Megan Thee Stallion's performance at Essence Festival. She goes on to say the issue is, what is context? Humanity does everything, but does everything belong in a stage? No. Is everything for kids? No. Is everything for everybody? No. So when we as a culture make something like this mainstream, it shows a lack of discretion and discernment. 
To those in the comments who laugh at anyone who wants these things for our culture, you certainly have that right. Just as many folks have the right to what our mainstream international export out music to show us in a respectful light. I like to go on the record saying this won't age well, and that's my issue. I love Janelle and Meg. I love the way I love us all, and I don't like this moment. Don't bother debating me. LOL, I don't care, and I do this. For 25 years, I've done this. So read, ponder, or don't. All right, so... There wasn't anything, in my opinion, necessarily wrong with what India Ari said. She was responding to Megan Thee Stallion's performance, um, and she was responding to Janelle Monae's bearing her titty while performing on stage. This is what's not wrong with it. Um, India Ari has stayed pretty steady and consistent with her messaging, right? And... It's one of appreciating oneself, not having to diminish your womanhood in the gaze of the masculine eye, right? And she never really comes across like preacher or anything, and the girl is immensely talented. Um, unfortunately, that kind of thing, you know, when you when you get to a point in your life where you remain kind of, it comes off stubborn and um, you're looking down on another person's expression of an art form that you two in the same environment can coexist. It kind of gives off like you're kind of um, moonwalking or backsliding off of your own messaging. Because the great thing about art and the way you express it as an artist is there is no limit to it. And there is, while there, hap there is definitely a lot of commentary as to what it is and what should be and what shouldn't be, that definitely those kind of things fly in the, in the face of the very thing that makes art such a beautiful thing. Um, you know, when we opine a lot, we're essentially inserting our expectations onto somebody else and what we want out of that person. And we're not really embracing it on a critical level. Like, in the IRE, um it's great that she has positive music. It's great that, you know, she has so much to say at any given time. But it's just a weird... It's The optics are weird when you're doing it against other women. Now, with that being said, two things can be true at the same time. While NDRE may come off um, a little tone deaf when it comes to female expression... Because she didn't have any of this. She didn't save the same energy for R. Kelly. I don't believe she saved any of this energy for Bill Cosby. I don't think she saved any of this energy for Trey Songs, uh, Chris Brown. Um, just anything that is way worse. And how it's um how the character and the art just doesn't match the thing about what megan's doing is that it's not new what megan is doing is actually pretty tame compared to what millie jackson has been doing um what um there's a lady back in the 1800s last name broken like sex has always been part of music sex has always been part of art and the thing about it is like Ma madonna has has done it right madonna has gotten it on a much larger scale not only from politicians but from the catholic church and the girl did everything except bear her uterus on stage. 
So when you have Megan Thee Stallion, who is, in my opinion, artfully and tastefully in her performances, taking back the, um, taking ownership of her sexuality and female expression and made it into, to where it's not the forefront. Like her lyrics and her flow and her stage presence are front and center. And she's very cute. So it's like, what more do you want? Now, when it comes to Janelle Monae, she, I've never known her to, I guess, feel inspired to bare her breasts and her titties on stage and in music videos and through the music and the album, the album and everything. Now, the music hits. It was just interesting to me that she was just never that girl until recently. And this goes into a deeper conversation that needs that probably needs to be had as to the the coincidence where success doesn't come to a female artist until they either lost weight, lowered their um the what do you call that the neckline on the shirt uh show more cleavage um and to Janelle's uh, using Janelle's current performance as an example bared her titties on stage. Very nice titty, very nice titty, very beautiful titty. Um, I just never, in her almost 15 years into her career, um, I just never thought that you need to do that. That's great that you're queer, non-binary, and all that other stuff. Um... But it's like, where, where is this going? Um, like I said, the album still hits. Music is pretty good. Um, the dis, There's a bit of a disconnect for me between the, the Sweet Albums um, and this latest album as far as the presentation. Now, going back to India Ari, I don't know where she thought she was. She probably thought she was down in Disneyland or she thought she was down in Dollywood. Like, mentioning trying to tie it into Essence Festival into something that's for kids. That's never been the case. Never seen uh, a child of Happy Meal age down there. Essence Festival is an entire weekend at, at the least, I believe. So I don't know where she thought she was going with that. And it's like, when you start talking about family and kids and trying to like wonder where did the morality go and when you, we both know that the, the event and the venue is not for kids, it's never been. Like pe adults go to these things to get away from their kids. So she missed me on that. Um... And the conversation that that we're having out here about Indy Ire is one that a lot of us that have been around since her first album is that Indy Ire has always been a, a granola crunch, curmudgeon, um, stubborn older lady. And the word on the street is that she is routinely rude and nasty to people. Um, which, when I think of neo soul artists and stuff like Jill Scott, Erica Badu, Lauren Hill, Michelle and Dale Cello, and the R. Ring, there's definitely a misunderstanding that I think we, the consumers, have. Um, we have this assumption that because they have a natural, because they're in a head wrap, because they wear um, Afrocentric colors in their clothes, that they're positive and they're not 
that they're um they're passive and they're a pushover and they're they're codependent codependent on men. No. Um you know, some of these artists out here tend to lean via their appearance or their music into conservative bigotry. Um, you know, when it's too, when it's too black an expression or too liberating an expression as a black male or a black female, that's a problem for them or it's uncomfortable for them. And, you know, over time, you give a person enough rope, they will hang themselves metaphorically. So in NDRE's case, it's like, she is definitely showing who she really is. And unfortunately, when that becomes the case with some of these artists, people start to diminish the talent or, you know, talk down to the relevancy of the person. Um, and it's like, you know, they can have an opinion and say what they want, but the music is still pretty good. Has she sold that much? Probably not. But everybody has a plateau moment in their career when it comes to music. Like, Neo Soul hasn't been a thing since forever. Um, but, you know, NDRE wasn't all the way wrong. Um, you don't necessarily have to show your titties everywhere you go. Um... A, that takes away from the music, and B, that that starts to raise an eyebrow as to artistic integrity. And that has nothing to do with how well you're covered up, but definitely gives, you're trying to, you're trying to compete with the sexualized music and the, and you're trying to get popular again by going that route. And it's just like, that's not who you are to us and that's not how you've always been so i'm a little i'm a little um i'm with indy re on you know janelle monet bearing her titty um i'm not a hundred percent with indy re when it comes to megan the stallion um because what megan the stallion is doing is very tame and she's entertaining like She's entertaining, and the message that you're sending to everybody else out here when they see a black woman going down or speaking down on an art form or expression of that art form that's different from theirs, but is also coming from another black woman, it's like you kind of... You kind of are a walking contradiction of the positivity and the message. As female empowerment is still positive. And being independent and not bowing down to men and being a strong, empowering woman in a patriarchal society. Like, that's positive. It's not all always head wraps and carrying a... a knapsack on your shoulder and all the other stuff. Both expressions are great. Oh, and before I get up out of here, um, well wishes to Angie Stone. I was on TikTok uh, yesterday and saw that she was in a wheelchair. And this is after the Vlad interview that she had where she was looking um, especially emaciated a little bit. Word on the curb is that Miss Andy Stone, another neo soul icon, um, hip hop icon. She was the original member of the rap group Sequence, that was the first female hip hop group um, back on Sugar Hill Records back in the late seventies, early eighties. This is before Roxanne Shante, before Salt and Pepper, before uh, JJ Fad, before Lil Kim, Megan Foxy, MC Light, Queen, like. Andy Stone's in a wheelchair these days. Um, 
And I know that girlfriend is in her 60s, but word on the curb is that she has uh, sarcoidosis, which I believe is the same thing that took Bernie Mac out. So, uh, well wishes and, um, to her. Uh, hope she, she's okay, she continues to be okay, and that there's love and light around her and her family. Um, big shout out to Jill Scott for the national anthem. Um, she did the damn thing. Jill Scott's another one of my faves. Great music. Speaks her mind. Knows what she's doing. Knows what she's talking about. And doesn't back down off of what she said. Uh, and that could be scary for some people who aren't ready for that. So, this is Mr. Five Star Refuse Podcast. Uh, while we're between Season 4 and Season 5, I will be on YouTube a little bit more. Uh, and uh, y'all stay hydrated. Uh, apparently, we're the sun is getting closer to the apartments these days. And the Canadian wildfire is still burning. And we are just going to have to stay indoors. Get an air purifier. Uh, and that's all I got. So I'll catch you guys later. Be sure to check the I Refuse podcast out. A streaming platforms, I Refuse podcast, After Dark, The Usual Suspects, all on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. The link is on the YouTube channel. The link is on the Twitter at I Refuse Podcast. All one word. The link is on our IG page at I Refuse Podcast underscore between the words. Mm. And we will catch you guys later. Peace.